When studying any book of the Bible, it's common to pick up a Bible commentary and glean from the insights of scholars. However, many commentaries on Proverbs are unable to provide in-depth analysis of every single proverb. The variety of topics and haphazard arrangement of the book makes it difficult to write a concise study help. These problems cause many scholars to group proverbs into general topics. While each individual proverb provides a facet of truth, grouping them by topic allows the student of wisdom to build a larger, more comprehensive understanding of the principles and truths found within the book. This topical approach provides an important way of ingesting the wisdom teaching of Proverbs. I will continue in later lessons to look at the different categories of Proverbs, but for this lesson, I want to use a topical approach. This approach will provide an important, complementary study tool for our continued study of individual Proverbs. Our topic for this lesson from Proverbs will be the theology of God. What does the book of Proverbs teach us about God? I mentioned in our introduction that Proverbs is a book of practical wisdom, a guide for everyday life. There are only nine Proverbs that mention worship, sacrifices, and tithing. However, many Proverbs mention God, and what Proverbs says about God is very enlightening. This lesson will list Proverbs about the Lord in subcategories, in the order they appear in Proverbs. Let me hasten to say that many Proverbs can be grouped under several different topics because they may mention multiple subjects. This means a single proverb may be listed in more than one topical subgroup. In addition, it means that grouping proverbs in different subgroups may provide new insights and different emphases we would otherwise miss. Let's begin this topical study on the theology of God in Proverbs with the first subgroup concerning God as the Creator. In this subgroup, we find four Proverbs. Listen to them. He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their Maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Proverbs 14, verse 31. He who mocks the poor shows contempt for their Maker. Whoever gloats over disaster will not go unpunished. Proverbs 17, verse 5. Ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Proverbs 20, verse 12. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Proverbs 22, verse 2. These four Proverbs emphasize God as Creator. However, did you notice something interesting? While the Bible clearly teaches God as Creator of the universe and all that is in it, the book of Proverbs mentions nothing of God creating the sun, moon, and stars, mountains, seas, and animals. In Proverbs, God's creative acts focus on the human condition. In Proverbs, God creates all of humankind, and specifically the rich and poor, both groups being answerable to Him. Thus, mocking or oppressing the poor shows disrespect for God, something the wise and righteous would want to avoid. Additionally, Proverbs notes God as creator of our eyes and ears. This is especially interesting for the book of Proverbs because these body parts are considered primary instruments through which humans gain knowledge and understanding. The implication is, is that God has created us with the capacity to gain wisdom. Moreover, by wisdom, we remember God is our creator and maker of all. With this wisdom, we should be careful how we treat our fellow human beings within community. Another subgroup of four Proverbs describes God as omniscient or all-knowing. Listen to these Proverbs. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. Proverbs 15 verse 3. Death and destruction lie open before the Lord, how much more the hearts of men. Proverbs 15, verse 11. The lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of a man. It searches out his inmost being. Proverbs 20, verse 27. 
The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he frustrates the words of the unfaithful. Proverbs 22, verse 12. These four proverbs underscore the all-knowing character of God. In the cosmic realm, death and destruction, which are unseen by men, lay open to God's scrutiny. Proverbs notes the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, watching over knowledge and the activities of humankind. Additionally, the lamp of the Lord searches the innermost parts of human beings. Proverbs teaches that God is able to see all the outward activities and understand the inward motivations of human beings. This means nothing is hidden from Him. There is no place, even the grave, where men can hide from God's view. Even darkness, a common aid to thieves in the night, cannot hide evil actions, for the Lord's lamp exposes all things. A lamp in Proverbs is an instrument that sheds light, allowing sight, building knowledge, aiding in discernment, and identifying truth. In Proverbs, God is all-knowing. Corresponding to the idea that God is omniscient, Proverbs also teaches God is omnipotent or all-powerful. Let's quickly read these 11 Proverbs. To man belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. Proverbs 16, verse 1. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Proverbs 16, verse 3. The Lord works out everything for His own ends, even the wicked for a day of disaster. Proverbs 16, verse 4. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Proverbs 16, verse 9. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Proverbs 16, verse 33. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Proverbs 18, verse 10. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs 19, verse 21. A man's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? Proverbs 20, verse 24. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like water course wherever he pleases. Proverbs 21, verse 1. There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Proverbs 21, verse 30. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. Proverbs 21, verse 31. While the Bible teaches that God is firmly in control of the universe, the book of Proverbs once again limits its focus to the Lord's control of the human condition. Within this realm, God's power is unlimited and no human plans or activities can stand against Him. Quite interestingly, the writer of Proverbs notes that nothing is too small to escape God's notice, including the answer to every casting of the lot. In everyday life, God directs the replies and steps of men. He is actively involved in the daily affairs of men. For the practical wisdom of Proverbs, there is an unusual religious note concerning God's interaction with human beings. He protects the righteous and blesses the plans of those who commit themselves to Him. These Proverbs should make any student of wisdom pause and reflect on their spiritual condition. In a broader and higher view of God's power, Proverbs sees God in control of governments and nations. The Lord directs kings, determines the victor of battles. One proverb sums up the Lord's power succinctly. There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Speaking of the religious note in God's omnipotence, let's look more closely at Proverbs' teaching on God's relationship with the righteous and the wicked. Listen to these three Proverbs. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but He thwarts the craving of the wicked. Proverbs 10, verse 3. The way of the Lord is a refuge for the righteous, but it is the ruin of those who do evil. Proverbs 10, verse 29. A good man obtains favor from the Lord but the Lord condemns a crafty man, Proverbs 12, verse 2. It's important for the student of wisdom 
to understand from these three Proverbs that God responds differently to the righteous and the wicked. For the wicked the Lord thwarts, frustrates, ruins, and obstructs their cravings. He condemns them and brings them to ruin. For the righteous the Lord gives favor, blessings, protects from hunger, and becomes their shelter during difficult times. The stark contrast in God's response toward the two groups is intended to motivate the student of wisdom and us to pursue the righteous way of life. Another subgroup of Proverbs concerning God reflects His passionate desire for social justice. Though this is a current theme of activist groups around the world, God has always been deeply concerned for justice. Let's look at these Proverbs. The Lord abhors dishonest scales, but accurate weights are His delight. Proverbs 11, verse 1. He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their Maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Proverbs 14, verse 31. The Lord tears down the proud man's house, but He keeps the widow's boundaries intact. Proverbs 15, verse 25. Honest scales and balances are from the Lord. All the weights in the bag are of His making. Proverbs 16, verse 11. He who mocks the poor shows contempt for their Maker. Whoever gloats over disaster will not go unpunished. Proverbs 17, verse 5. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. Proverbs 17, verse 15. And he who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward him for what he has done. Proverbs 19, verse 17. Differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. Proverbs 20, verse 10. Do not say, I will pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord, and he will deliver you. Proverbs 20, verse 22. The Lord detests differing weights, and dishonest scales do not please Him. Proverbs 20, verse 23. Because of His love for humankind, the writers portray God in ten Proverbs as being zealous to see that we act justly with one another. Four Proverbs specifically mention God's displeasure with dishonest weights and scales because they are an example of unfair business practices among neighbors. Proverbs uses some of the strongest words possible like detests, and abhors to describe God's negative feelings. Dishonest weights and scales are a practical example of how we do not love our neighbor as ourselves. They are poor business tactics and undermine community well-being. Proverbs shows God to be concerned for the underprivileged within community. He defends the boundaries of the widow. The Lord rewards those who are kind to the poor and He is the ultimate source of revenge for those who have been wronged. Within the government, the earthly arm of His justice, God becomes angry when justice is perverted in the court. A surprising concept taught in Proverbs concerns God's actions of testing and judging human beings. Let's look at these Proverbs. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Proverbs 16, verse 2. The Lord works out everything for His own ends, even the wicked for a day of disaster. Proverbs 16, verse 4. The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Proverbs 17, verse 3. He who mocks the poor shows contempt for their Maker. Whoever gloats over disaster will not go unpunished. Proverbs 17, verse 5. All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. Proverbs 21, verse 2. The righteous one takes note of the house of the wicked and brings the wicked to ruin. Proverbs 21, verse 12. The mouth of an adulteress is a deep pit. He who is under the Lord's wrath will fall into it. Proverbs 22, verse 14. Seven Proverbs illustrate the Lord as both tester and judge of man. Building upon God's omnipotence and omniscience, the Lord is capable of testing every heart and weighing every motive. Such innermost knowledge of human beings allows God to set a day of disaster so that He might punish the wicked and bring their house down in ruin. It's also clear 
that regardless of what man thinks is right, just, or fair, the Lord has his own standard by which he makes judgment. A wise man will learn God's standard and live by it instead of what the world or culture teaches. An obvious subgroup for Proverbs illustrates God as the source of blessings. Here are the Proverbs. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, and he adds no trouble to it. Proverbs 10, verse 22. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace with him. Proverbs 16, verse 7. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Proverbs 16, verse 20. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Proverbs 18, verse 22. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Proverbs 19, verse 14. In five verses, Proverbs lists some of the blessings that God gives. Prosperity is often mentioned as a blessing for the righteous or wise man. However, some unusual blessings also come when a man's ways are pleasing to God. The Lord makes his enemies live at peace with him, and the Lord will bless a righteous man with a prudent wife. It should be noted here also that Proverbs often describes ill-gotten gain as vaporous and temporary, whereas riches gained through a righteous life will remain. In chapter 10, verse 22, God brings wealth and adds no trouble to it. Godly riches are gained with peace as opposed to wealth, gathered through violence, corruption, dishonest scales, theft, or murder. Such evil riches will not last and bring only ruin and destruction. Though worship and sacrifice are barely mentioned in the book of Proverbs, what the Lord thinks about them is clearly illustrated in three Proverbs. Let's read them. The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. Proverbs 15, verse 8. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Proverbs 15, verse 29. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Proverbs 21, verse 3. Proverbs clearly teaches that the Lord responds differently to the worship of the righteous and the wicked. The Lord hates the sacrifice of the wicked and refuses to hear their prayers. The evil may think God is appeased or satisfied by their acts of worship. He is not. However, the Lord is pleased by the prayers of the righteous man. The key to the Lord's response lies in each person's way of life. For the Lord values a person's humble heart, producing right and just acts in life and community, far more than his hypocritical acts of worship. In Proverbs, God looks at the heart. Let's look briefly at a subgroup of Proverbs that outline what God hates. This kind of list should be extremely valuable to students of wisdom seeking to please the Lord. In addition, it may surprise some that there are ten Proverbs on this subject. The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. Proverbs 15, verse 8. The Lord detests men of perverse heart, but he delights in those whose ways are blameless. Proverbs 11, verse 20. A good man obtains favor from the Lord. But the Lord condemns a crafty man. Proverbs 12, verse 2. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in men who are truthful. Proverbs 12, verse 22. He whose walk is upright fears the Lord, but he whose ways are devious despises him. Proverbs 14, verse 2. The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. Proverbs 15, verse 8. The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but he loves those who pursue righteousness. Proverbs 15, verse 9. The Lord detests the thoughts of the wicked, but those of the pure are pleasing to him. Proverbs 15, verse 26. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, 
they will not go unpunished. Proverbs 16, verse 5. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. Proverbs 17, verse 15. Even without the numerical saying in chapter 6, the book of Proverbs gives a detailed list of things the Lord hates. Generally, the Lord detests the wicked, but these verses from Proverbs specify what it is about the wicked that He hates. God detests the lying lips, wicked thoughts, proud and perverse heart, and sacrifices of the devious wicked. He condemns their crafty intent and their perversion of justice. God's hatred of their ways prompts the Lord to condemn and punish the wicked. A student of wisdom needs to learn this list and avoid such actions and inner intentions in order to secure God's blessings rather than His wrath. Remember, the list is both internal and external. Let's end our study of subgroups by looking at the Proverbs containing the phrase, the fear of the Lord. There are ten of them. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. Proverbs 10, verse 27. He whose walk is upright fears the Lord, but he whose ways are devious despises him. Proverbs 14, verse 2. A wise man fears the Lord and shuns evil, but a fool is hot-headed and reckless. Proverbs 14, verse 16. He who fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for his children it will be a refuge. Proverbs 14, verse 26. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. Proverbs 14, verse 27. Better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. Proverbs 15, verse 16. The fear of the Lord teaches a man wisdom and humility comes before honor. Proverbs 15, verse 33. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. Proverbs 16, verse 6. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. Proverbs 19, verse 23. Humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and life. Proverbs 22, verse 4. Beginning with chapter 1, verse 7, and repeated in chapter 9, verse 10, the phrase, the fear of the Lord, is considered the essence or primary qualification for gaining true knowledge and wisdom. In chapters 10 to 22, the first section of Solomon's writings, this phrase is found ten times. This fear of the Lord, or reverence for God, adds length of life, provides a secure fortress, brings wisdom, wealth, and honor guards against trouble, and provides blessings even to the next generation. Wisdom students would do well to cultivate this attitude in order to gain the blessings it brings. Though many would not think of Proverbs as a book of theology, many Proverbs give insight into God's nature. A complex picture of God and His character are shaped by 67 Proverbs. The Lord blesses the righteous and condemns the wicked. He supports the truthful and punishes liars. He sees into and weighs the hearts of men. God detests unfair weights and measures and defends justice. The Lord is creator of all, watches over all things, blesses and protects those who trust in Him, and rewards the generous. By His mighty power, God's purpose prevails in all things. In the book of Proverbs, God is in control. The universe is orderly. The righteous prevail and are blessed. The wicked fail in their treachery and come to ruin. Good overcomes evil, always. The book of Proverbs presents the rule of order with no exceptions. Many students at this point would stand up and note, Life experiences teach us that exceptions do exist. How do we answer that? In the Bible, Ecclesiastes and Job describe a world where exceptions to the rule exist and that humans struggle with this reality. However, that is a subject for another study. For us, the book of Proverbs provides the guidelines. 
the rule upon which God and His universe are intended to function. Because exceptions exist does not mean we should disregard God's guidelines for a righteous way of life full of blessings and security. Grouping Proverbs by different topics can be a very rewarding and rich study. The student of wisdom would do well to look at such topics as business practices, parenting, relationships with neighbors and friends, self-discipline, greed, diligence, laziness, speech, and of course wickedness and righteousness. Such studies provide a wealth of instruction on how to live a happy, successful, godly life blessed by God. Thank you for joining me in this topical study of Proverbs on the theology of God. I pray you have learned a new study tool for the book of Proverbs and that this lesson enhances your desire to know more about one of the most fascinating books in the Bible. Until next time.